I'm very interested in making paintings that have a set duration to them. So works that use ephemeral materials, so they might only last for a very short amount of time, or works that employ instructions, so people have to follow instructions so that the works continue for a longer amount of time, they might even continue after I die and live on through other people activating the instructions. I've also recently started working with performers. So that's something I'm quite interested in with painting, this idea of working with performers and allowing people to interact with my work. So figure three was really interesting for me because it seemed um, to offer artists a platform to test something out um, on quite a public platform. So what I've done is I've moved my studio into Bolt at 39 to work here for the entire week, um, which means I'll be working as the public move around the space. So having moved the studio here, I'm going to be working in the space with fabrics and with large paintings. Um, so I'm going to work with lots of different types of paints. So I'm going to use UV paint, glow-in-the-dark paint, and it's called a recto-reflective paint. So it, it will reflect light back as, as light hits it. So it's a bit like cat's eyes in the road. So I've got fabric surfaces and painted surfaces, which are dotted around the whole exhibition space. And then I'm going to be working with prisms and crystals from chandeliers and theatrical light. So the aim being that I will shine the theatrical light through the prism and hopefully those prisms will cast rainbows across the exhibition space. So those um, rainbows or spectrums will start to populate the surfaces of, of the canvases. And then these prisms and crystals are going to be mechanised in some way. So they're going to be moving constantly. So these rainbows will kind of appear fleetingly and then they'll disappear again. So it's a real kind of, you know, play in the space this week, which I'm really looking forward to doing. I think my interest in rainbows specifically comes about because they manifest, they can manifest anywhere in the world under specific atmospheric conditions. So I kind of like the fact that anyone can see one. You don't have to be in a set place to know to see a rainbow. A rainbow can just manifest, um, and, you know, because of the raindrops and the sunlight being in the, the right places. So I, I like that because I feel it's not hierarchical in that sense. It's, it's a global phenomenon. At 3 p.m. on Sunday, the 31st of January, I'm going to be working with Northumbria Fine Arts students in the exhibition space where they will be performing my paintings. So I'm going to be working with them throughout this week, as I said, because the studio is now going to be based here. So we're going to be using theatrical lighting as well to kind of animate the paintings, and they're going to dance and perform the paintings in the exhibition space. So it's kind of, we're workshopping it this week, and something will come together on, on Sunday. I mainly make work about the, the how malleable culture is and how it's always in flux, it's constantly changing and perhaps the, the, the similarities and the differences between Western and Indian culture and, and, and the meeting points between those cultures as well. Some of the materials that I'm interested in at the moment are um, something I'm calling aspirational materials. They're, they're materials that I have, when I, when I see them, that I associate them with a kind of Indianness. And so one of them, for example, is Axminster carpet, which is 1950s British carpet. But for me, my association is seeing it in um, Gurdwaras and Sikh temples, big long lengths of it, and everyone sits along it and we eat together. So the, the visuals are the aesthetics of that material a bit like touch lamps are kind of are, are Indian to me. The piece that I've made for Baltic 39 figure three is a series of three touch lamps. They're called cairns. They're a kind of assemblage of found matter, stuff from building sites and fake rocks and rubble uh, and, and chrome plated components as well. And it's um, a direct influence from my my dad, my parents, who would ritualistically light this uh, ghee lamp, so ghee in a little terracotta pot, and they'd place it at sundown for 30 days on a site just by the house. And on that site once stood uh, a building, and that was built by my brother, who was using it to farm and sell cannabis. And since since his prison sentence, the building came down and. So he was, my, my parents were advised by a saint to light this 
jolt on that land to dispel any of negative energies that exist there in that space. These objects are me thinking about this um, kind of split that I see, or a cultural tension I see within my brother, that he has these quite traditional values, a bit like dad lighting that jolt, but, but also it very extremely kind of Western aspirations to, to, to own materialistic objects, for example. Um, and so I wanted these cairns to have a function to, to, to operate as a kind of materialistic touch lamp, um, but have a, maybe be a way of me thinking through these very disparate ideologies between Western and Indian thinking. You're invited to touch them and they, they almost have that, um, a, that active, the way that my dad would go and light the candle, they still have that that active part to them.